What's up, guys? Here with you with FC Wonder Kid, episode 91. Here with my guy, Fredson. How are you? I'm doing better than Jurgen Klopp. Let's just <laughs> say that. Uh, no, I'm, I'm doing really well. It was a fun, fun week of football. We got a lot to talk about, but how are you doing? I'm doing so well, and you mentioned Jurgen Klopp, <laughs> and it's not going well because Liverpool this season has no wins. Okay, in this year, Liverpool has no wins in the Premier League, which that is shocking. And I just want to say, not convincing a player like Jude Bellingham to go to Liverpool. I will say yeah. just from the start of the pod, mm. I'm going to go bold and say right now, Jude Bellingham would prefer a move to Man United than Liverpool. A hundred percent in my opinion. And Eric Ten Hag does not get transfers wrong. Casemiro, Martinez, Eriksen, Ma um, I so many good options. So I just want to start yeah. the podcast like that. Going bold. Yeah. So put your bold comments right. in the comment section in YouTube too. Start. Let's start. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, give us uh, throw us a couple likes here. Um, but you, you, it, we we can't start this podcast without talking about Todd Bowley and Chelsea and the transfer window because Todd Bowley would have it no other way. Because with the amount of money that he has spent on Chelsea, he he is screaming for attention, right? <laughs> uh, and and I think that's what he's going to get. Is he not? Yeah. I mean, Chelsea <clears throat> still. Still, after spending five hundred million plus, what is it, six hundred million now? Todd uh, Bowley, they yeah, still, spent more than six hundred million. In oh the my god! And they and they still could not get by Fulham at Craven Cottage. <laughs> João Pelinha, João Pelinha. Mm. Oh my days! One of the biggest bargains in this transfer window. One of the best midfielders too in the Prem. Yeah. Okay, an elite, an elite tackler. And I won't be surprised if Fulham can't keep him. Until uh, next season, okay? It's he's well, such a good player, another one. But there's so, <laughs> but 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 Paulinho also is one of those players. I mean, he makes everybody around him level up, right? True. He's that much makes them that much better. Uh, but you have to give the credit. I mean, I, I I'm I'm a little biased here, mm. but Timmy Ream is uh, a uh, once again on the day. Uh, was probably one of the better players on the pitch. He had True. a clearance off the line, um, and he continues to get better at center back. Uh, mm -hmm. He used to play fullback. He used to play DM back in the day when he was a New York Red Bull. Um, so True. it's it's really, really impressive to see. I don't know who you give most of the credit to. you got to give mm. it to the player. But Marco Silva has Fulham uh, playing tight football, playing – principled football um playing defensively sound for the most part football and then to go in and get a first rate keeper like burnt leno um I, I i'm just i'm really impressed with how they've come together and yet you know still they're they're they're, they're nicely above mid table True. um but there are so many stories like that in the premier league this year that that hopefully we'll spend a little time talking about the brentford's um, mm -hmm. talking about the Brightons, right, that have completely outperformed. But in this scenario, coming off of the backs of them spending, of Todd Bowley and Chelsea spending $120 million, is that what it was, dollars? But, yep, right? $21 million, yeah. On Enzo Fernandez, And, uh, you know, it was great to see Enzo in, but right away, right <laughs> away, you could see that Enzo did not have the Florentino <clears throat> Luiz that he needs next to him Whoa. on the pitch for Chelsea. That's and true. that will actually hurt him long term, um, mm. you know, playing against a team like Fulham. I really. Ah. It, long term, you, Enzo's you gotta, fine. <laughs> I, I'm sure he'll be fine. Okay, and I'm Enzo, sure he'll be fine. Fernand, Enzo Fernandez was 121 million, and I'm going to say this: Ooh. well done, Todd Boyley, because he is one of the best young midfielders in the world that can compete with the likes of just naming like Jude Musiala, Pedri, Gavi. Enzo was the best youngster in the World Cup. So I'm going to say another thing too about Enzo: Enzo only <laughs> lost once at Benfica, and Enzo put Benfica midfield competing with. Juve beating and PSG drawing both games because of Enzo yeah. Fernandez. So 120 million. Chelsea didn't lose against Fulham too. Okay, I couldn't. Like I'm just gonna say Enzo is gonna have a great impact starting at Chelsea with Jean Felix back. Mudrik getting the confidence and next season it's gonna be so incredible for Chelsea fans within Kunku. So Todd yeah. Boyle. 
Well, Tuchel is just taking advantage of the system of the transfers. FIFA and UEFA weren't ready. And long term, if Graham Potter is given the time, like Arteta was, I'm not saying he's better than Arteta, but Graham Potter is a great, great manager and one of the best <laughs> English. He needs time and he could, he could do an amazing job at Chelsea. Let's see. So He could, it. he could. But I also think, and I've, I said it last, last time around, I said he's out of his depth as it stands. I, there's no way, there's no way that he wanted every one of these players coming in. I mean, they, they, they've already shown their inability um, to actually deal with the flurry of blank check purchases that Todd Bowley um, oh. threw at them in this scenario. I mean, come on, you've got, obviously, Obama Yang is gone in but that he's, sense. I mean, he's, in he's at least... Though. He's at least oh, that's fine, but he's at least and gone Sterling. mentally, and and they they could find they found no uh, yet unless he goes on loan to Turkey. They found no ability um, to send him anywhere. He has no real value as it stands um, in this particular league. And then on top of that, most of the guys, including Benoit Badia Shile, who has been absolutely lights out in just three games, True. right in three games mm -hmm. uh, for Chelsea, clean sheets. Um, but when it comes down to it. He's not even registered for the for the uh, Champions League coming up because there are too many players and they still can't get a goal. They still can't get a goal, right? <laughs> so I, I'm looking at this a little more in yeah. You want to build a behemoth on the backs of a of a loophole on the backs of that's like that's like a billionaire uh, a billionaire um, everyone uh, here. Let me get this right. Okay, that's like patting a billionaire on the back for not paying taxes. Right. That's like because he found a loophole. Right. In this scenario, he has built a behemoth or potentially a behemoth, although I think he widely, <clears throat> widely overpaid, widely overpaid for some of this talent. OK, you're absolutely right. There's a lot of coulda, shoulda, woulda, maybes in this particular scenario. But in the end, I don't think he's going to get the return he's looking for off of this 500, 600 million that he has spent. Yes. If they had just spent 120 million on Enzo, there are still many, many questions to this Chelsea team. Like, why can't Graham Potter get Cucurella to play good football? He's, right? he's improving. Uh, he's been uh, improving, he, though, Cucurella. And yeah. but do you think but, so? Mudrik and Enzo will mm, flop at Chelsea? I don't think Enzo will flop at Chelsea, but I do think that there's a limit to what he's going to be able to do for 120 million. I think he's when going to be one of the best midfielders in the press. But when you, when you. Okay, but if he's one of the best, that that's not what 120 million buys. It is. 120 million <laughs> buys the best, the best mm. in the Premier League. I'd, I'd say it should one of the least. best. Like, look at the likes of that. Like, Man United got Casemiro for 70. He's 30 years yeah. old. Enzo Fernandez mm -hmm. is still young. I do understand where you're coming from, though. That it's, yeah. it's, it's a risk because of the, the huge number and a lot of the transfers. But I, mm -hmm. I disagree, though, with Graham Potter. I, I don't think Graham Potter wanted the, the summer moves. I think Cucurella mm. is the move he most likely liked. But from yeah. the January moves, João Felix. I think he liked Noni Madueke, Mudrik, Malo Gusto maybe too, he, uh, Graham Potter liked. So I yeah. think he had more of a hand with the January transfer moves because he was there. But I, yeah. I, let's let's see. And listen, expectations too. Listen, and so look, I just, sorry. Look, yeah, uh, no, but like looking at the values, right, of what came in, I'm, I'm saying it right now, probably the only bargain that he's going to be getting out of this is a guy by the name of Andre Santos, who is not even in this team. And who knows if he'll actually ever be able to show his quality for Chelsea because of the log jam. And the other thing that I have an issue with when it comes down to this, now that I'm uh, coming clean with all of this, even it being an American owner – um, I, I don't, I, I don't like, what does this say to the actual youth pipeline? What well, does this say to the youth pipeline? What does this say? They've already, they've already lost June soon. So bell, they're going to lose others. They did retain Charlie Webster. They retained some good players, but what does this say to that youth system? That was supposed to be the jewel in the crown that was supposed to be, you know, um, uh, well, it, it says basically that no. We're going to be buying our players from here on out because well, we can't produce them. Mount that is well. there. Reese James is there. I think the the uh, pinnacle. I, I got it, but most people are is. turning on Mount. But like right. Hutchinson played this season for Chelsea. He wouldn't have played for Arsenal. Maybe he could have. I'm not saying. Mm. But like I still see. I understand where you're coming, and I do think Potter will bet in the youth too. But I just wanted to say too with Enzo, 
I think the yeah. biggest winners with the Enzo deal was he mm. ver plates. They have got more or less yeah. 50 million from the Enzo Fernandez deal, getting 25% of that transfer yeah. to Chelsea, and they got 32 million. 32 yeah. million. And Enzo only played five months for Benfica. Yeah. So the biggest winners <laughs> were he ver plates because they already yeah. had everything prepared for it. So that and is true. And Andres Santos, I completely agree. They were right with that. Malo Gusto too. Mudrik, I think it's right. Enzo, I no. think it's right. Which one don't you think is right? So, I don't think, I still don't like the Mudrik deal. I don't think that that, I think you could have gotten a much cheaper, better, right now, better winger. Um, even looking insularly, even looking, um, like, uh, you like know, you've, Anthony you've, Gordon? you've got a bunch of wingers already. No, no, not Anthony Gordon. Ah, no, I, I, that, that's an overpayment too. That almost feels like uh, money laundering in some respects. Uh, no, I'm talking about look at look at the Brighton side of things, right? There you mm. go. Uh, Kaoru Matoma, okay, three million. All right, now, now Whoa. was that a scouting feat or was that just luck? That's right? insane. Was that that's a scouting feat or bargain. was that just that's luck? An insane but they also they they signed Noni Matoeke for thirty million. True. He's not even really gonna. Uh, he's he's made his debut, but you know Mudrik is gonna take some time. He's mm. gonna have to take some time to transition to this. He's either gonna be a big flop or he's gonna be a ridiculous I star. In him. I think right? There is no there is star. no middle ground for this. I just don't think he's as good as a player as everybody's making him out to be, or they really, really want him to be. I think there's a lot of inconsistencies to his game, and I want to see it. He wasn't as great for Shakhtar, and he winds up literally being what? Shakhtar's what? I think most expensive. Yeah, definitely his most expensive yeah. outgoing transfer. Um, so I, I, I honestly, um, you know, I want to look at it, uh, but then it just continued. I want to look at it with bright eyes. I want to look at it as I'm a way forward with... for Chelsea. But Chelsea was not broken before Todd Bowley came in, necessarily, uh... right? They were not even 18 Aging. months removed, not even 12 months removed. Yes, but you can still have a very good overperforming team with an aging team. You don't need 25 new pieces, Right. Unless you're nodding in Forest, apparently, you know, oh. and you do 29 and your best player is still Brennan Johnson. But when it do. comes down to it, the, the, the way I look at it is um, if you're going to spend $600 million, right, before the loophole gets shut, before UEFA catches up, before, you know, everybody catches up to what he's doing with the, the eight and a half year contracts and all that fun stuff. If you're going to do that, right, then what, what time frame are we giving Todd Bowley to get this done, Right. They need to win the Premier League, and they need to win it, win it stat. But they're still in 10th place. This is the most expensive 10th place team I've ever seen. It's, it's okay? still getting started. And, and I know it's, it's – it, of course, but Kai Havertz is, Hi, Havertz is still getting started. Cucurella is still getting started. No, Everyone new is still getting started, and they Havertz don't have any answers. New. Havertz is not new, but I, I no, think, I know he's not new. I, I think know he's not new. I think there's a total rebuild that needs to happen at Chelsea. I think Havertz will go. I think Pulisic will leave. Ziyech, Connor Gallagher, Aspi. Okay, Tiag Silva has been monumental, but I don't know if he'll stay long term. So Mendy, I think there's going to be a lot of transfer moves done and until get, the summer. And get replaced and by who? And replaced by who? By who they're getting? <laughs> like, well, what, but, but, like, Enzo's going to replace like Kante. Christian, I, I Christian Pulisic is a better winger than Nodi Matoeke. But he's Christian not better Pulisic than Mudrik. Christian Pulisic is a better winger than Mudrik. He absolutely is better than Mudrik. No, he isn't. A hundred percent. Absolutely not. is. Oh absolutely my gosh. Absolutely is. Are you serious? I am serious. Are you, he, he's, done, he's done more in his career than Mudrik has done. Mudrik has been good for the last 12 months. If that. Oh if my that. God. There, you, his, his, his. Christian Pulisic's biggest issue is that he hasn't been able to stay healthy. That's it. That is it. And that in and of itself means that they're going to have to take a bath on the 70 million they spent on him oh if they're going to offload him. I really so want to see the you comments. Saying, on. Love it. You saying Mikhailo Mudrik is better than Christian Pulisic? I 100% say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I he do. has I won really a Champions League. He has scored in bigger games. Mudrik has done nothing the to flare. tell you that he is better. What does flair have it. to do with anything? But, flair means nothing no, if no, you no, can't it's, actually it's not use flair. it. Sorry, sorry. It's the way when you okay. like both football perspectives as a player. Right. I think Mudrik yeah. is much better than Pulisic right now, in my opinion. How? Like at, at the what? velocity, the decision well, making. Right now, right now, hold on. Right now sorry. means nothing. You have to talk about Pulisic at his prime. If you're talking about him right now, the only reason he's not playing is because he's injured. The only reason he's not playing is because he went to the World Cup. 
and got injured at the World Cup, right? The only reason he's not playing, I mean, this guy, I put a little respect on Christian Pulisic's I even say name. Ziyech is better than to Pulisic. To compare him. I think to... Ziyech, Mudrik, João Felix, they're all better than Pulisic, in my opinion. And Christian Pulisic has done more for Chelsea than Hakim Sayek has done, 100%. <laughs> And there's a reason why he was frozen out, and they want him gone. They couldn't even get their deal done. But if he was American, so I'm not. Right? I'm. I'm I, but but like. But wait. Z-H. If he was American, Moroccan. I think no, like, no, no, no. Ziyech has barely scored goals for Chelsea. What, think, what are we even talking about here? What goals has Christian Pulisic scored for Kel, uh, for Chelsea? I just think like, has he not Z-H scored against the biggest biggest teams? Well, I know. Yeah, I think you're goading. You're goading me on right now, and I'm taking. I'm taking the bait as it stands because the football knowledge to say Ziyech is better than Christian Pulisic. I, I don't even know now. I don't even know what frame you're looking at it at because everything is all over the place. People- Mudrik has been Mudrik has been on any somebody's mind for like not even eight months. Mm. Okay. Right? He hasn't even really hit the screen. We all saw we got great, great, great football content from Mudrik. But I, I just don't see how you can say you don't have that Mudrik is already, that already better than Christian Pulisic. Pulisic doesn't have that level he, of He hasn't velocity. even done anything. He doesn't. That level of velocity. We're <laughs> yeah, talking about speed now? 100% Mudrik's change of direction, speed. The intangibles that Mudrik has as a winger, a young winger right now. I'm sorry. How many, pro, how, how many pro goals did he have for Shakhtar? I think he had like what? He's got like thir- more than 30. He's got 13 professional goals, which... Okay, it's, it's it, but like it's not. I think I think long term these clips will be insane, Bretton, which I love, and I'm and I'm so hyped. People say yeah. in the comments section, what do you think about this with Ziyech, <laughs> Pulisic, all these players being thrown around, and all at Chelsea, but, which is phenomenal to see too. But but uh, before yeah. we move on, but before we move on about Enzo, I have mm. to say this right about Enzo. Um, is it is it the coaching? In Roger Schmidt at Benfica, was it Enzo making everybody better? Uh, why is it that a thirty-year-old Jao uh, Jao Mario um, literally is having the year of his life? One great year. Yeah. Okay, 20, 25 goal involvements already this season. He's literally one of the best. Uh, he, yeah, twenty-five. Look it up. It's insane. 15 he's goals, got the sixteen. Eight assists. Fifteen goals. Yeah, eight assists this season. Uh, but I, he had he had two yesterday. I think he's got a couple more elsewhere. Mm-hmm. I, I definitely he's got twenty five. Okay, trust me, I did this math. He is on par with Gonzalo Ramos this season for goal involvements. Okay, they have the exact same amount. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I, yeah. um, but but on top of that, uh, I think a lot of what made Enzo very good was him being freed up by Florentino. I don't think Florentino gets enough credit for Fuck. what he does for Benfica. And, and and there's no doubting Enzo uh, Enzo Fernandez is worth uh, uh, I wouldn't say he's worth 120, but he is a world class star. But a lot of it is we're buying him. This is the purest example of potentially buying somebody at their high, mm-hmm. at their absolute market value high, mm-hmm. at their absolute value uh, level of. You know, he's coming off of young player of the year in the World Cup, not young player, young player of the tournament in the World Cup. That's he's true. coming off winning the World Cup. He's coming off of playing 29 games in a Benfica shirt and only losing once that weird 3-0, three zil- three loss to Braga, right? So mm-hmm. this is the purest definition of, a, of somebody going in and buying a, like a stock yep. as high as you most possibly can buy him as it stands right now with the expectation that it turns into an apple. Or something, mm-hmm. right? We turn into the best company ever, yeah. and I honestly believe that that's going to wind up being more of an anchor on Enzo mm-hmm. than it is on on being a uh, buying somebody for a proper amount of money and allowing them to flourish <clears throat> and to build a system around him. There ain't no system right now with as many players as they currently have at Chelsea, and the rebuild that you're saying that they need to go through in order to become what compete Champions with, League winners again? Compete with City, compete with United coming up, Arsenal coming up. Prem has right, so City- much competition now. Newcastle coming up. Like the- Chelsea needed a rebuild. Jorginho, Kante, uh, Pulisic wasn't good. Ziyech wasn't good. Havertz wasn't good. Like they needed a total change, and it's happening. It's happening. And yeah, I think Havertz too is going to Bayern Munich. Want to say that? 50 million. And I love how you're saying Enzo, Enzo, Enzo with Benfica because Roger Schmidt. Sure. Enzo, Florentino, João Mario, Gonçalo Ramos, Antonio yeah. Silva at the back, Vlaco Dimes, a lot of great players are in this Benfica team. And in the Champions yeah. League, 
that I think Benfica is going to go through against Club Bruges. So no team in Europe will have an easy time. Gonçal Ramos, pa, continue. I wanted to give that shout out. And with Chelsea, yeah. I want to ask you this, so because mm -hmm. Enzo Fernandes, I think it's not going to be Denis Zakaria long term. So you think who no. would be better, Moises Caicedo, Declan Rice, or Lavia for the Chelsea midfield next to Enzo? Who would be better? Oof. Lavia still got some growing to do. I mean, Declan Rice, you want the finished product, but still young. Mm -hmm. you, you, I, I'd go Declan Rice easily. And he's, he's been West Ham's literally only good player this whole season. I would go season. Declan Rice too. I agree with you. I completely <laughs> um, agree and, with and, you. Yeah, and, and I think the funny thing is, is they've already come out with, a, I think, kind of a moderate price tag for him, right? It's not mm -hmm. the 120 that had previously, or 110 that had been circulating uh, a little while back. It's more like 70 or 80, which, uh, you know, hey, it's it's Todd Bowley can... Player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but if he can if he can drop what he's dropping on some of these players on such short, you know, um, sample sizes, small sample sizes, mm. I mean, by all means, go for Declan Rice. He's been one of the better midfielders in the whole Premier League. I agree. Um, at, without even having a throwing the young midfielder, you know, moniker in there. No, he has been one of the better midfielders in the Premier League, most consistent midfielders mm -hmm. in the Premier League uh, since he's won that role in the eleven, and it's been That's impressive. True. It's true. Um, so Declan Rice oof. for England too, Jude Bellingham yeah. for England too, all these players, man, key, 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 and I completely agree. Best fit for Declan Rice yeah. is Chelsea, but Arsenal are in the mix too. A lot of people say, put in the comment section where do you think Declan Rice will go, Arsenal or yes. Chelsea? So yes, just yes, mentioning, yes. I mentioning here, stri I was thinking here, what will Chelsea yeah. need? A striker, okay? And mm. who did we see today become the top? The highest scorer ever, okay? Record huh. breaker for Tottenham yep. this season. Harry Kane, okay? With 260 mm -hmm. goals, okay? That's highest goal scorer ever for Tottenham. Becoming a legend and the third player ever to get more than 200 Premier League goals next to Alan Shearer and Wayne Rooney because that's, yep. that's really bold, really bold. Yeah. And I think he can yeah. become the number one if he stays in the Prem with the next move. <laughs> well, this is true. Uh, well, let's see. Do, do some rough math, uh, back of the envelope math with me right now. He's 29. He just hit 200. Shearer's mm -hmm. at 260, I believe. So you need – this makes our math easy. 20 goals a season for the next three I think uh, with, with a cherry on top. And he's averaged more – I mean <clears> – <throat> Maybe this year he'll do 30 goals like he did five years ago, five seasons ago. But in between there, he was averaging more like, what, 17 to 22, mm -hmm. 23 Premier League goals. So, yeah, I, I think as long as he doesn't slow down, if he gets maybe better service or he's not like the person that has to do – a whole lot of the scoring uh, mm -hmm. like he does at Spurs. Uh, he absolutely can do it. But yeah, it gets a little hairy when you get above the age of 30, mm -hmm. unless you wind up being an Olivier Giroud or a, uh, a Zlatan Van type of 30. Van Persie uh, changing Van Persie, to the right yeah. team. Harry Kane. Yeah. <laughs> Harry yeah. Kane can do those 20 goals per season in the right team like Man United. He can do that. Mm. Imagine a shocker to Arsenal. Yeah, I don't think Chelsea. that's going to happen. Chelsea. Chelsea, good shout, Bretton. That would be insane. John Felix, I don't Lundin, know, man. Kane. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I feel man. like I feel like Harry Kane has some uh, some honor in him that he probably oh. would leave for a Manchester club before he leaves for a London club. Well, but he has a house in London. <laughs> He does, but you it's know, also so, the kind of the principle, I think. I mean, you literally were brought up. Routine. You know, you I, are North Arsenal. London uh, royalty. He was brought up in Arsenal. Uh, no, <laughs> I know. I, 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 don't, I don't see it happening. I, I see Manchester United in this future. Mm, I, 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 like, I do see that too. I do see that too. But it's, United yeah. would be... Would be with Eric Ten Hag the smartest with Rashford there, Bruno. We'll talk United oh. soon, but yeah, it's, it's yeah. Man Tottenham won against Man City. Okay, Pep Guardiola, yes, <gasps> alarming sign. Okay, leaving Cancelo go, and now he's got like Tottenham in this new stadium <laughs> has never yeah. gotten a draw nor a defeat, yeah. all wins <laughs> against Man City, and not even one goal suffered. From uh, yeah. uh, uh, from this Man City team, okay? Tottenham are solid against Man City. Yeah. It's, it's absolutely shocking. Uh, shocking. I, I, it, it, it really, really is. And it, it also more shocking that, I, I mean, I guess I understand the tactical principle of leaving De Bruyne on the bench. <laughs> uh, maybe. Well, I don't know. Uh, Pep is Pep for a reason. 
but it was a little it was a little alarming Awkward. to not necessarily see him in the 11 when you've never won and and nobody's ever scored uh, or city has not scored at this Tottenham Stadium this beautiful beautiful stadium that I really want to go to we got to go there one day Fuck. um but listen um I, I honestly believe that one of the biggest plays of the game, this is going to sound goofy, mm. was that first tactical yellow card that Kuti Romero took <laughs> by wiping out Holland. Uh, he honestly, it, it, it feels to me like he got in Holland's head. Mm. I know that that's weird, and Holland ended up getting like no service the majority of the game. Um, but that, uh, he made a mistake on the second one when he tripped Grealish and got the red card late in the game. But when it comes down to it, I think that that actually was sound by bodying up uh, showing some physicality. It had some old world, old school Premier League in it. Not quite Vinnie Jones, but Roy Keane type of thought <laughs> process there, which was at least get in his head. I mean, I don't think Erling Holland was alarmed by it, mm-hmm. but he got wiped out in that that uh, that one caution. Um, and then all you needed was one, and they held on. They held on, but City looked toothless, and it almost feels like there's a little discontent mm-hmm. at City. I mean, would you say that? Joe Cancelo ain't happy, man. <laughs> no. Logan, reports suggested Bernard Silva yes. being there too. Uh, I think it's the start. It could be the start of the downfall of Man City. And Ooh. Pep Guardiola, if, if, he needs moves. Desperate needs yeah. moves, okay? He got a contract extension with Man City. So I could see this summer a total rebuild at Man City. And again, I'm going to say Jude Bellingham. Shout him out because if... Gunnar is leaving, Bernard Silva is leaving. The best player to replace all the fans want is a Jude Bellingham because they have Alvarez yeah. already and Perone. Perone already entered, okay, registered for, to go to the Champions League. So Guardiola yeah. is showing that he's pr- trusting the youth talents of Man City this season. R- Rico Lewis, Perone, Alvarez. Haaland is young. <laughs> so Foden's yeah. young. So a lot of youngsters at Man City. So again, rebuild vibes in my opinion and i want to say with this tottenham team what a game from emerson royal what a game Mm. coincidence Mm -hmm. that pedro pogo was signed and we see the best game ever from emerson Emerson royal against man city no competition exactly and i really think Mm. that's going to benefit tottenham long term pedro pog being there because i think pedro pog is one of the best right backs in the world of football top 10 definitely in my opinion so yeah. I, I I see positives, but again, Conte is going to leave. Okay, yep. Udogi will come. Yes, Pogo will be there, but a lot, a lot of variables that we need to see if Tottenham will get right. Hinkabi would be a right move, I think that. Yeah. But uh, it's again speculation. I don't think uh-huh. that Tottenham has such as as such a solidified better future than Arsenal. Then Man United, and I'm going to even say Newcastle for me, shows me more signs of being a top team in the future than Tottenham. And I know they just beat yeah. in City. So I, I'm going bold a bit by saying that, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, it's one thing to, you know, Liverpool beat City too, and where are they in the table? You know, it's no, it's just yeah, kind of true. like uh, we'll, we'll get to Liverpool in a second. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I do... I. I it feels a little too early to say to me that this is some sort of a downfall, but there's definitely a peak. It mm. feels like they've gotten to, even if they do win the Champions League title, it feels like maybe that consistency that has made Manchester City so dang tough to play mm. over these past few years and what they've done is just unbelievable with how many Premier League titles in the last five years and so on and so forth. Um, it, it, it almost feels... Uh, like, yeah, there, there will be a changing of the guard. And, and um, I, uh, how fitting is it that Jao Cancelo leaves and then within two games, he's already got two assists Fox. at Bayern, you know? And he's already, I wouldn't say he's back to his best, but at least there, I, I get, I get what Pep is saying that nobody is bigger than the club. We've seen that multiple times, nobody's right? Bigger than Not Pep. just with Pep. No. <laughs> nobody's bigger than Pep too, right? So uh, uh, some of what he thinks is nobody's bigger than the club might be exactly what you just alluded to. Nobody's bigger than Pep, but Pep feels maybe he's bigger than the club. I don't know. I don't know. And, and really what it comes is. down to is, I mean, he is the club, right? Okay. Yes. We all remember uh, who came before him with Pellegrini and, and some of the others, uh, but yeah, Pep, Pep is what has made them the, the consistency machine that they absolutely are. The constant giants. They are, that's the reason Manchester is blue and will remain blue until, you know, Manchester United uh, gets their act together and keeps their act together. Mm-hmm. Keeps That's the bigger, 
that's the bigger thing here. City has been dominant for the last five years, uh, longer than that, but really dominant over the last five years. And I, I don't know. I mean, could they continue their dominance? Yeah, in can. the future, if he makes the right moves, <laughs> exactly. uh, yeah, he can. He can. I yeah, he can. Peron is the right move. Alvarez is the right move. Holland the right move. Rico Lewis for being promoted. I think Pep Guardiola needs time, <laughs> and Man City yeah. will definitely give it to him. And the Cancelo move. Cancelo, I agree. Yeah. Two assists already for Bayern Munich. And with Alfonso Beautiful. Davis, I gotta say, mm. the best fullback duo in the world, next to Nunez and Shaqiri. That can be said. That those are two yeah. elite fullback duos. Love it that <laughs> Fonzie and Dude Minch are already competing in those in that in, in those discussions. Um, yeah, I, I, and it's a I, I would concern. I would say they're neck and neck. I would say they're neck and neck. Uh, you know, Nuno Mendes is great, but uh, no, H- Hakimi had a very very good game the other day uh, with a messy winner um, at the death. I guess you and, could say. Uh, but when it comes down to it, I think what the Jao Cancelo move does for Bayern is it actually puts him in contention. And I get it. They're drawing all over the place uh, in the Bundesliga. But I think it actually puts Bayern in contention um, to win this Champions League. Mm-hmm. I really do think that they have a chance with with those guys. If you can get Can- Cancelo 85%, that's a made-up number. If you can get Cancelo 85% of what he was at City, um, you know, he's, he's definitely above Pavard. He's definitely above... Uh, anyone else that they'd be putting there right now. So um, if they can remain healthy, Bayern Munich, I think um, I, I have to throw them into a Champions League favorite type th- of conversation right I now. I think they don't win Real Madrid. They don't beat Real Madrid, though. I'm going to say that. I think I think they don't beat. Ben Man City, too. That would be an interesting matchup. Jamal Musiala uh, yeah. could step up. Fonzi, as yeah. I'm saying. But with it, the Cancelo move, too, I just want to say it's a power move. By Pep Guardiola. A power move, yeah. okay? Nobody's yeah. bigger than Pep. And I can see Sterling to left. Zinchenko, Gabriel Zuz. Guardiola was fine. And I think it's to control the locker room. And Guardiola mm-hmm. knows. Like, Rui Costa knows too. He accepted Enzo leaving because he even said it in an interview. No one is bigger than Benfica. Guardiola saying nobody's bigger than Guardiola, in my view, in but, my opinion. But that, but that hard ball that Rui Costa um, played, that hard yep. ball that he played when it came to negotiations, earned but, Benfica <laughs> but no a whole lot of extra cash. No replacement. Yeah, no, though, no replacement. Which, which no replacement. I'm gonna, it's going to take a little while. People have to judge that, at least with the Enzo deal. But yes, Romario's yep. balling. Other people are balling. I would mm. extend Sherendur. Okay, from Befica B. I think Sherendur people remember this name. Okay, if you can leave with a name here about the in the podcast, Sherendur 18, I think will be a mm-hmm. top midfielder in the world of football. Okay, Italian oh, youngster yeah. at Befica. I saw him in the youth league a lot of games. Oh, yeah. And Andre Gomes, goalkeeper. Two enormous yeah. talents. Wanted to say yeah. that. And uh, Liverpool, so, we so, mentioned. We mentioned yeah. Liverpool just a bit. I want to ask yeah. you. Is the Salah extension a mistake? Uh, their heart was in the right place. Their their cash, uh, their cash, wallet was in the right place when they did it. It made a whole lot of sense. I just think this Sadio Mane, him leaving, it's like the soul of the club is gone. Mm. Um, the, so keep, the injuries, been, keep Mane, Salah go. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, where they were, where where Liverpool was at that moment in time and what Mo Salah was coming off. And like Mo Salah is not having this amazing dynamic year, but he is still pretty much leading scorer, right? I mean, he is doing what he needs to do. Uh. He's just not transcendent as he was last season or the year prior to that. Uh, Where their head was, I don't think there's, there's no way to say that that Mo Salah deal was a mistake. There's there no is, way to say because that. Because that money, Looking, if they hadn't signed that money, they would have gotten a midfielder. Yeah, I, I, I would they have though? They're not really good at bringing in midfielders, even when they had the money. Gakpo previous came in. Gakpo came in, yeah. which like what? <laughs> I mean, yeah, which which everybody actually applauded when it first happened, and as of right now, Whoa. I think he just had his his best game in a Liverpool shirt, and he still got killed in yeah. the comments section uh, by most Liverpool fans uh, because he's not scoring, and obviously Darwin's not necessarily scoring either, and mm-hmm. there's injuries and. Uh, they picked up, I mean, against Wolves. First off, you have a team that actually made some changes, one. 
True. Um, they've got Lopetegui. They're fighting Sarabia. for their Premier League lives. They brought in Sarabia. They got amazing games from Max Kilman at the Craig back Dawson. and Ruben Neves in the middle. And yeah, uh, they just got they they picked with the wrong wolf on that particular day. But they also <laughs> you can compound that by Joe Matip. Uh, I believe no Joe Gomez had possibly one of the worst games in a Liverpool shirt. Uh, that I had seen. I mean, everybody was misfiring for the most part on that day. So it was it was embarrassing. But then this is not new. 2023 has been ripe with just terrible performances. And at some point, it does have to come back, no matter how good Klopp has been mm-hmm. for Liverpool. At some point, this has to come back to Klopp. And when asked about it, Klopp says he's angry and he has no answers. It's true. It's pretty clear he has... No answers no as it stands. They have no <laughs> wins in the Premier League in 2023. They've been beaten not once, but twice. Three zip. They've <laughs> lost to Brighton. They've lost to Brentford. They've lost to... Wolves. I, I mean, they, <laughs> Wolves, yeah. I, I, this is not not a good period. Uh, is it too early to say it's the death of... No, they just need to get the heck out of this Premier League season. I, uh, I, and Klopp will be lucky to get out of this season without losing his job at some point. And I think true. the only reason they actually keep this job he keeps mm-hmm. his job without stepping down because he doesn't like where this is going is because of the question marks around the ownership group. And no I don't know if there's anybody there. This, and no and, midfielder and, still. Like, like, in, in, uh, like, it's true. I see Man City. I see Chelsea. I see Arsenal. They prioritize yeah. signing midfielders. Liverpool, no. Naby Keita, Tiago Alcantara, okay, yeah. elite deal. But Fabinho ain't even competing at a level close yeah. to Partey, Rodri, or Casemiro. Liverpool have to go. And, and Chouameni, Chouameni, that was the deal that they needed last summer. And they didn't get done. So I'm expecting yeah. midfielders to join Liverpool. And I'll say it, the Salah extension, mm-hmm. long term, will be seen as a mistake, in my opinion. Yes, he is a Liverpool legend, but Gakpo was transferred in. And, like, the midfield is so bad. Just so bad. And Luis Diaz is there. Darwin Nunes is there. Young, young forwards are there that will score the goals. And I expect a second unbelievable season from Darwin Nunes. I believe he's just getting started. And just like Luis Suarez even said in some comments, I agree with him. He has all the traits to go bold with Liverpool too. And uh, yeah, the, and Klopp, man, it just saddens me. People say the seven-year curse of Jurgen Klopp. Now, yes. this season, yeah. people now he's going to answer that. Now he's going to answer that. Or next season. Because next yeah, well, season, if Bayer Leverkusen are successful with Xabi Alonso, I am sh- yeah. uh, sure, I am absolutely sure that he will be one of the names to go to coach Liverpool if yeah. Klopp yeah. is having a bad time. A hundred percent. Gerrard didn't well, show up. Others didn't show up. Chabi no. will. Chabi Alonso will. Yeah. Guardiola pupil. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, the verdict is still out with him at Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, they they lost it. the other day, and, and they, didn't, they didn't look particularly good with True. as good of players they have on the field. But, yeah, I, I think, I mean, with Klopp, there's another seven uh, that you can throw in this. Uh, yeah, it, restaurateurs, they call it the seven-year itch, right? They have to move on because they just get bored of their concept. Mm-hmm. Maybe Klopp is bored. Maybe he just doesn't want to be challenged by this anymore. But when it comes down to it, they've lost seven times in the Premier League. That is more than the last three seasons combined. Heavy losses, man. Hey, you know? Whoa. Seven losses. And three, three of these games this year in the Premier League, they've conceded three goals, right? <sighs> Uh, it's it's pretty like it feels different it is beyond just injuries it's beyond if you, if you didn't build enough depth of talent that's the thing you and i we love to talk about we yeah. well we love to talk about all the moves but we generally when you're on a podcast when you're when you're you know creating sound bites if you will you always want to talk about the big flashy move the the Kaishedo move the 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 jude enzo. move the potent the enzo move right but really they needed more uh shrewd yeah. Moves and a lot of these moves that they thought were shrewd. I okay, Navi Keita was not a shrewd move. None of them worked out. A lot of their depth moves have not worked out. True. Right. True. And that's Mel? that's the issue. There's a crisis of depth at Liverpool in terms of depth of talent that fits into Klopp's mold. Completely and agree. he's too one dimensional. When Alexander Arnold and Robertson don't work, they're too one dimensional. And Simicus, okay, he's he's good, but. You know, he had a great little run of form, but obviously from a sustainable standpoint, 
yeah, they just don't have the depth. They've been riding Joe Gomez for years and years and years when everybody has been able to tell them that Joe Gomez is not necessarily a Premier League center defender. Ooh, I'm sorry. That's right? a hard one. He or, can or play fullback. fullback too. It is hard. <laughs> he can play fullback. But he's, he's got versatility. Not at that level. Or Virgil van Dijk. Not even close. Yeah. And Matip too. All three are better than Joe Gomez. It's, I agree it's with tough. That. And, and they still have a bloated wage bill. And it's, it's not true. just Salah. They and you, still have a bloated wage bill. So And, and you look at Man City at center backs of, like, let's say just Virgil van Dijk, Konate, like uh, yeah. Matip, and then you have Joe mm. Gomez. And then you see City with Laporte, Ruben Dias, Akanji, Hake, like Stones, all solid options. So that's what Liverpool <laughs> have to compete with. And it's so... Even Chelsea now. Ben White, Badiashile, Tiago Silva, um, yeah. Wesley Fofana transferred, as fourth option. Like, it's insane the level of competition that the Prem has. And they let go of a Christensen, Chelsea, to go to Barca, yeah. which we will mention more. But it's it's I, I think Liverpool just have to start spending because Chelsea is Man City will spend Arsenal will spend in the summer I believe that will happen Newcastle yep. too everybody's gonna spend so Liverpool start <laughs> that's but, my but main thing, message but United. the thing with Liverpool is, but the thing with Liverpool is they have when when everybody's on right mm-hmm. they have the the Premier you know the Premier League chassis they have a Premier League winning chassis right they have players that are capable of being incredibly world-class and playing a phenomenal style of football that we've mm-hmm. kind of forgotten right okay maybe maybe it was on display in that 9-0 win over Bournemouth which was basically just false confidence for every Liverpool fan out there to think that Liverpool was back right mm-hmm. um but when it comes down to it they still need to compete in the Champions League they got Real Madrid oh. coming up next yeah, right if yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not mistaken well, and Real Madrid right now we can go to them at some point they're having a crisis of confidence as it stands too but Liverpool's beyond that. And I think, yes, the flashy moves are there, but I still think they have when everybody, when Liverpool is healthy, they still have a team capable of at least competing for a title. What they don't mm. have is those really shrewd, smart depth pieces um, that allows them to, to provide themselves with continuity. And I that's what Pep Guardiola got over the last five years that Liverpool did not yet, right? Know, Pep man. going out and getting Ake and Akanji and be, being able to put them. I Akanji is not world-class to the point he's where good. Ruben Diaz is when he's healthy, but Akanji has been so much better than I think anybody was expecting him to be well, um, when he came in. There's no doubt that he's been one of their better players. I think injuries uh, cost but him a lot of that price tag because he is injury-prone yeah, at Dortmund. And yes. yeah, I, 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 so is everybody. <laughs> so is everybody at Dortmund. And and, and but, I want to yeah. say we're talking here rebuild, and and I don't think Liverpool will be title contenders next season. I'm going to put that out there because I think mm. City, Arsenal, and Man United, man, Man United, yeah. like and Chelsea, obviously, <laughs> obviously spending too. They're going to spend incredible, but I want to focus on Man United now because sure, Man United have the fourth highest wage bill. In the world of football right now. And Eric Ten Hag is doing the restructure of the club. When he finishes in the next two seasons, when everything's organized, United Mm -hmm. will be a successful, successful team in Europe. With Eric Ten Hag. I want to start by saying this. Because, yes, I was completely shocked by saying, seeing that they were the first highest paid. But... That, we saw that United game against Crystal Palace. Rashford yep. once again scoring and now has 26 goal contributions for Man United with Eric Ten Hag. World-class levels. And I cannot yep. wait to see what's going to come with Sancho now back too. Sancho got the rehabilitation of Eric Ten Hag back in <laughs> Netherlands. That like a one-to-one personal project, which is so interesting to see that Eric Ten Hag even has that planned. High level of coaching, and he's going to go bold with uh, with Rashford. I want to say yeah. that too. Yeah. And Brun Fernandes. Brun Fernandes keeps on capitalizing. And R- Brun Fernandes, Rashford, Anthony, I think he'll be better. A top number nine mm-hmm. next season, we mentioned. Or Ozime or Harry Kane. I think United are mm-hmm. must title contenders. Or it definitely have to be in the discussion. Eric Ten Hagman. Oh. Wow. That's insane. Insane what he's doing. And Casemiro's going to be out in the next three matches of Man United. Uh. Big, heavy loss. The most important player of Man United, in my opinion, but, this season. 
Think think about how many times we've seen Casemiro go into bone crunching tackles, right? <laughs> uh, make last ditch attempts to stop a player. Um, that was you ready for this? That was Casemiro's first red card of his career. What? No, that man that he knew how to do stuff in La Liga. <laughs> yeah. I I mean I'm pretty I'm pretty certain I didn't get that wrong, but you know when I looked I looked pretty what? far back and couldn't find a red card. But listen. Of course he gets his, if it is his first red card, of course he gets it choking Will Hughes or seemingly choking Will Hughes, who is just a absolute gnat. He is just a mosquito. He just is such an annoyance uh, generally on the pitch. And he's had longevity, of course, at, he was at Derby. He was also at uh, Crystal Palace. But yeah, Casemiro is so important to them. And for him to lose his cool in that sense, they won't miss him for the Carabao Cup, but they will miss him in the next three games. Oh, yeah, but it doesn't will. matter because they're playing against Leeds United and Leeds United can't <laughs> hit the broad side of a barn right now. Yeah. But uh, Casemiro is so damn important for mm-hmm. Man United. And and they need they need a proper backup to him or, or you know somebody that can Manina. actually um, – <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, but Palinia. I mean, if if Fulham can learn from Benfica, uh, Palinia should not be gone for fifty or sixty. Sports you know, just he learn. Be gone for more. Sports yeah. just learn after Brun Matej Nunes, Poch Nunes. Oh my God! Looking at the other side, Darwin, Joe yeah. Felix, Enzo. Jeez Louise, but, man. But but thinking about Casemiro in terms of his his ability to have this uh you know to, to play this role this mm-hmm. massive role uh in many 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 big big moments right over his career and also to have the level headedness um and that be one of the first times you look at him and you say whoa he really lost it there and why for will hughes why you know so um i i think uh hopefully i think united can have him for three four five more years I agree. You know, and he well, can play because he plays smart five, for the most part. Five, uh, five is a little tough. I think five he can be in the roster, yes. But I think three yeah. will have Casemiro Prime. Prime, yeah. one of the best well, CDMs in the world. Uh, well, United. one more before we move on, man. Uh, move on from Man United. One more nice stat there. Mm-hmm. Marcus Rashford has scored eight goals in 2023 alone. Okay, <laughs> that is the same amount as both Chelsea and Liverpool combined. <laughs> Where's Salah? Yikes. Where's Salah? That's what I mean, man. They're getting that big boy top earner in the <gasps> Premier League. Rashford's gunning oh. it 100%, man. Where's Salah? Yeah. And I'm going to say, man, with Arsenal, just going to transition because I have to. We got to talk about Arsenal in the we Prem. Do. Like, where is, like, Trossard? Where's Martinelli? Where was Saka against this Everton defense with Sean Dyche, okay? Sean Dyche showing that he's a proper manager, okay? Lampard wasn't (laughs) doing the job. Sean Dyche will do. And Onana, man of the match performance. What a game from him. And he will move soon, just like Trompelinha, Declan Rice. Onana will leave soon. And what a game from him at Everton. Anthony Gordon money too. So I'm very curious to see what Everton does. I think they'll stay in the prem with Sean Dyche. I think they will stay, personally. So uh, I mean, I, I think Sean Dyche has said it best. He he said when asked whether or not you know he felt the challenge or the pressure with it all, he's like, you know, I've kept much worse teams in the Premier League before, exactly. uh, which which is absolutely true. And at Everton had a crisis of confidence. Burnley, they man. had a bunch of guys that just were just down, right? And they, they they there was the fear of failure, I guess, in there, the fear of letting this, this, fa- this fandom down, which is a True. rabid fandom, just a phenomenal group of supporters that uh, obviously they've been a Premier League club for so dang long, mm-hmm. um, or at least perennially a Premier League club, that they just never really expected to be in a situation again, again, after last season, right? And, and the escape man. there. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but this masterclass back in the day. And Chelotti masterclass. Uh, Top managers just, seem to be needed it, at Everton. <laughs> it's just what a ridiculous game for Arsenal to, like, turn off the fire, right? To turn off the desire, right? It was such, you know, maybe it was written in the stars that, that Everton get Dyche. Dyche takes him to, through the beep test, takes him through, you know, all this stuff. Uh, that you wouldn't see uh, happen, I guess, so early on or mid-season. Um, and, and 
it's amazing what a little structure does for a team, right? True. What an actual formation, what an actual uh, kick in the butt Rude. does for, for <laughs> a team. Now, it's whether or not Sean Dyche can get them to sustain that. Mm. But when it comes down to it for Arsenal, very clearly, now they were lucky, I guess, that Tottenham outplayed, not outplayed, but they beat Manchester City. Mm-hmm. But it, it's amazing to me that Arsenal, at that point in time, that that is the game that they, they have their let up in. That mm. nobody... For the most part, across the board, nobody looked good for Arsenal on the day. True, true. I agree with that. And Zinchenko didn't look good. Partey didn't look good. Odegaard didn't look good. Arteta yeah. needed a player like Mudrik, man. <laughs> Trussard, yeah. Trussard didn't look good, too. And now, next game against Bedford, I'm expecting Arsenal to show up. And I want to say, just ending <sharp inhale> like $12 million for Jorginho for a midfielder yeah. move. It's not a bad it's, deal, people. It's no, not Moises Caicedo level. I think Moises Caicedo level, 17 million, much better than a Jorginho 12 million, in my opinion. Yep. But it's not a bad deal at all done by Arsenal. And they got a replacement, okay, that they mm-hmm. need in an eventual loss of Partey. You never know what can happen. So I think it does solidify us. <laughs> uh, uh, and Tros- and uh, Mudrik and Caicedo would have been much better than Jorginho. And Trossard, in my view, I think that is fucked. And I think Arteta deserved, okay, to spend more than 60 million in one transfer for Arsenal because he's showing guarantees now. And Ben White is his most expensive transfer. I know Ramsdale, Ben White, a lot of a lot of transfers were done, but he deserves a bigger level of investment. And I hope to see yep. that in the summer. With a Vlahovic, I don't know, but a top world class player. And but a, but again, with these players that he was pursuing, he was also getting sucked into a bidding war. Right. I mean, Mikhailo Mudrik and Moises Caicedo mm-hmm. both did come and get me, please. Right. It was both like. We want Arsenal. We want Arsenal until yep. basically somebody else with Mudrik came in with more money. And then he's like, no, we want Chelsea. We want Chelsea. Maybe that's why I'm annoyed by Mudrik. But anyway, <laughs> when it comes down to it, I applaud them. Mm-hmm. I applaud them. And I don't think that this goes up to, you know, the miserly American that owns Arsenal. Right. I think I, I think this is just them ha- showing restraint in what became a big, big, big transfer fight to- for Caicedo. And for and for Mudrik. So I think given the constraints and given what happened and how late it all was on in that uh, transfer window, I think they could have done so much worse than bringing in a guy with a pedigree of Jorginho. I agree. Right? I, I, they, I think it was a phenomenal thing, and, and we'll see. Phenomenal. But as of right now, even after losing to Everton, they still have a five-point lead with a game in hand. So... I I don't see fun, I won't say phenomenal though because <laughs> I think Tielema would have been better and I think that was I, an attainable midfielder for yeah. for for Arsenal uh, too. In my opinion, I agree, but uh, but uh, you know every every person I've spoken to that is an actual rabid Arsenal fan said Tielema wasn't a real target, I guess, or he wasn't the player that they were needing um, in the moment because I get I don't I really don't necessarily know and those those supporters obviously know their club a whole lot better. Uh, but, like, come on, at least you can get the winning mentality of Jorginho. <laughs> I think so. Uh, uh, oh, well, the, the, the supporters, let's see. <laughs> and, and I fully expect Arsenal to spend in the offseason. I agree. I, he's gotten the green light. He right. has gotten the green light to spend. So I, I fully expect them to spend. And wouldn't it be really, pretty ridiculous if they spend on the backs of a actual Premier League title? It's true. Um, it's so, Champions League football coming to Arsenal but, too. Excitement. And Arteta yeah. too deserve, would deserve the backing in the summer too. So but but you know what is amazing right now? Th- that... Over there, because I don't know if we're going to get to this in the Water Wonder Kids. You've got Eddie and Ketia. You've hopefully got Gabby Jesus on his way back. Mm-hmm. But my goodness, this is an Arsenal, a loaned out Arsenal player. Obviously, could be a American player. He could be an English player. He could be uh, a Nigerian player Balogun. in the near future. <laughs> but what Fullerin Balogun is doing over at Stade Rim, uh, he is leading Ligue 1. In goals scored with 14 goals. He's beaten Messi. He's beaten Neymar. He's beaten Mbappe considering how many goals they score against crappy competition over there for a 21-year-old to do this on loan is pretty dang impressive. One. He's got, ready for this? Balogun for Stadrim. He's got 62% of their offensive output for the whole league on season. Okay? They've scored 26 goals and he's been involved in 16 of them. Okay? They, They have not lost 
in I think it's like 13 games since this 30 year old Will still. took over as caretaker of the club. Exactly. Will still uh, brought on and, and, and cultured by football manager itself doesn't even have a UEFA pro license. And this 30 year old manager, uh, they're paying a fine for every game that he takes like charge games. because he's only got a UEFA A. It's amazing. It's, it's just such a cool story. So if you guys don't know it, Go look up Will Still, but he would not be doing any of this if he did not have Fuller and Balogun doing his job. So when it comes down to it, I got to ask you, mm. do you think Balogun has a future at Arsenal from here on out? I think I think they should definitely consider him in the summer, but I definitely yeah. think Balogun should have a future for the U.S. men's national team. <laughs> <laughs> ah, He's a striker. He's a striker for 2026, man. Gio Reyna, Pulisic, Tyler Adams, McKenney. I think Balogun oh. would fit the bill. Weya, like so many good players. Oh, it's dizzying. It's, it's dizzying. Good. It's but good yes, for you guys. Good for you guys. He's gonna yeah. make. He's gonna make his decision, and I think uh, Eunice Musa is gonna be the the key. Apparently, ah, they're, Musa, they're yeah. buddies, and and Musa has been uh, buttering up like buttering him up against. Uh, I guess Arsenal behind Academy. the scenes. So Arsenal Academy, um, both. That's, that's why. exactly right, yes, sir. That's, that's you got that right. Yeah. So people, uh, tell and, us and, in the comments, okay, about these yep. Arsenal moves, about these expectations next season. We want to know mm -hmm. what who do you think will go to the Prem and who will win the Prem 2 because competition is at its highest level. And we were mentioning Huge. how Arsenal mm. were going to spend in the summer and this is a team that just lost to Mallorca and must, must spend yeah. in the summer Real Madrid to compete with this Xavi going bold with Alejandro Balde, Gavi, Pedri, youngsters being there, consistent dubs in La Liga. Real Madrid need moves, and they need a Jude Bellingham now, and a replacement striker for Benzema too. So I want to say this, starting off, <laughs> starting this off. Yeah. And Joe Casillo, I think, is going to Real Madrid. I'm going to say Okay, that. all right. Well, that's interesting. But I, I, you know, Real Madrid, I think, is going to lose the La Liga title because they did not spend it all Ooh. during the winter. I, I I really do believe that. I mean, looking at them against Mallorca, um, this does not look, uh, you know, let, let's be honest. They never really reached peak great football playing Real Madrid last season either. They won Champions, by yeah. some pretty amazing happenstance, uh, call it fate, call it Rodrigo coming to the rescue, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, they they were never necessarily the best version of themselves last season, mm -hmm. and they haven't really reached that this season either. But that game against Mallorca, uh, credit to some you know some good goalkeeping uh, for Mallorca, but Real Madrid, this is what this is what they're doing still. When they needed a goal, because they were getting shut out by Mallorca, when they needed a goal, they were still rolling out Mariano Diaz. Okay, I have nothing against him as a player, oh but he's not God. a La Liga. He's not a La Liga winner, man. Like we've been saying for two plus years, Real Madrid needs a backup striker to Benzema, and Rodrigo. He will not play at striker, even though he has shown good things at striker at times. Fuck. He will not play him there. So what the heck are you doing? Like wh I, I don't understand it. And then you um, see Barca letting go of Depay, and they're stuck yeah. with that position, man. So people judged Barca. But Barca's transfer yeah. moves this season secured the La Liga for them. And I yeah. think next season, people ha must, must be judging Xavi in European competitions in the Champions League. I want to see Barca succeeding in the Champions League too. Because I think yeah. Napoli is going to win Serie A. I think the Prem, I don't know. But La Liga... I think Barca is going to win too. So I just wanted okay. to say that. Barca, uh, well, I am. Uh, and goal contributions. Xavi, yeah. that beauty, beautiful Xavi ball, has 39, th no, 32 goal differential, which is 39 goals and only seven goals suffered. 32 plus, man. Barca is playing incredible football, and Pedri and Gavi now playing together. And I'm so yeah. excited to see what they're going to deliver uh, long term. Long and they're not a they're not a team that if they do get an eight point lead in La Liga they're they're not a team that's going to necessarily let that go considering how how rock solid that defense has been True. in terms of not letting goals in this season I mean you could talk about the offense all you want but Barcelona's defense has actually been what has kept them in you know Fuck. pretty much every game I mean, especially that win against Betis I know they gave up a goal 
Uh, but they've they've been very impressive and cohesive as a unit, and Xavi has every every um, uh, reason to to question, be a part though. of that for sure. But, uh, but 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 before, like I don't know, man. I mean, Real Madrid, it just makes no sense. I know they also have a bloated wage bill. Mm-hmm. They do, they do. right? Um, but there are shrewd moves that can be made that are depth. You could reach into Castilla, which is still one of the best youth academies on the planet, and they don't give even remotely enough uh, opportunities to their Castilla stars. So I just don't get why they're doing it. Um, and all I can say is seven points in five games, whether it's Carlo Ancelotti or not, seven points in their last five games is not good enough. It's Champions it's League focus time. It's Champions League yeah. focus time. because Against uh, Liverpool. They're gonna, uh, and they're going to win it. They're going to win it. I really think yeah, they're going to they win will. it. And I, I, again, I, I have a question, though. <laughs> for yeah. uh, staying with Barca, yeah. it's would you keep Ansu Fati, Breton? Um, I did see some rumors come out, right? What was it, Manchester United in mm-hmm. for Ansu Fati or something? Yes, uh, 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 I don't know. I mean, at some point, Ansu Fati needs to make a decision because I don't think he's going to be a ever, everyday starter um, with what Barcelona is trying to build. Um, mm. I, I don't, so I don't won't. think he will. So, so uh, Barca uh, so, shouldn't so, keep Ansu Fati. Mm. No, I, I think Ansu Fati should uh, be be allowed to go somewhere. A new life, man. I think the injuries have 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 judged a lot uh, his time at Barca, and I think yeah, yeah, having a new opportunity that might be the best decision. And Rafinha, man, Rafinha. Yep. I think from Dembele, Rafinha and Fati. Fati could have the the highest ceiling, but Dembele I think gives the most guarantees out of them three uh, wingers, in my opinion. And that's what yeah. Xavi needs right now. Guarantees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, Madrid, guarantee. Bodic will leave. Casemiro has left. And I do think their wage will long term, they'll decrease it. Because there's a lot of aging yeah. players at Real. That, and Mariano Diaz, how much he is getting? Oh, my days. I have no idea. Uh, Carvajal. Uh, they have a lot. Yeah. A lot of players. And they probably got yeah, a bunch of loan players they're paying, playing the salary for, too. But uh, you look across the board, it's... Wage bill wise, uh, obviously a lot of the English clubs are there, but uh, the the money that comes in for the English clubs. I mean, when you when you see a Bournemouth yeah. spend as much as they spend, when you see Nottingham Forest uh, <laughs> spend as much as they spend, Taylor when you see Thomas. Wolves oh spend God. money, when you see Leeds spend more money than all of La Liga combined, <laughs> okay, you know that there is a a bizarre economic power shift a bizarre arms race that is going on right now that the premier league is obviously winning when it comes to retaining as many dollars as possible and then spending them like it's flipping funny money it's the only thing that would be more embarrassing for premier league clubs this season with how much money they put in and invested into new players in just this winter transfer window alone is to spend all that money and not have an English club win the Champions League. <laughs> Which can't be the case with Real Madrid and Bayern being involved. <laughs> exactly. And Benfica. Exactly. Bora Benfica. Go so uh, <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> love Just it. want the bias. <laughs> the bias. Oh, my gosh. But, like, and it, but this oh, also... Goodness, exactly. This also goes over to Serie A. Sorry. I mean, AC, AC Milan has had, honestly, one of the worst starts to a 2023. Um, then, I mean, uh, definitely worse than Liverpool. Yeah. Okay, they've conceded, I believe, 12 goals in the last four games or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, 12 goals in the last three games. They they did nothing. They did nothing this offseason. This offseason, this winter transfer window. They did absolutely nothing to get new blood in because they don't want to admit, maybe, that their transfer window leading up to this, right after they won the Scudetto, was crap. It was, it was really bad. Crap. It's Milan, yeah. Uh, very bad. Yeah. Charles de Ketzeler is not showing up. Rafael yeah. Leon, still no extension. I think he must oh. be considering a move, contemplating at least. But with Serie yeah. A, Napoli's going to win the Serie A, okay? The Maradona mystique after Argentina winning the World Cup. Now Napoli is going bold with Min Jae Kim and the best offensive duo, or one of the best, definitely, offensive duos in the world right now with Kvishka Kvaratskhelia and Victor yep. Ozime with 16 games, Ozime, 16 goals and three assists. This is a top, top striker in Serie A. And if he's going to leave Napoli, only more than 100 million will be considered. And Kvisha Kvaraskilia in the league 
MVP, in my opinion, I'm going to put that out there, already the Georgian winger, yeah. world class, has eight goals and seven assists. He'll be double I mean, digits in both yeah. goals and assists. The, the, like, the only one that can pip him for player of the year is Victor Osimhen. Um, yeah, exactly. right now or, or or maybe maybe a guy like Labotka or a guy like Zelinsky or whatever because no, they were no. so industrious blah 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 but no it's Kavartskilia <laughs> or it's Osimhen and what what an amazing tandem like okay Kavitsha Kavartskilia this is how bizarre it is right this is his first season in a major you know top five league his first season mm -hmm. and he I wouldn't call him he was always top of dribbles one right he was always dribbling and taking men on in the R Russian Premier League but he wasn't dominant per se right? Um, it, it, it all comes down to how Spalletti is using him and how Spalletti is playing to his strengths and how much space and how much attention Victor Osimhen takes up to free a guy like Kvaratskhelia up to do his do his stuff. And there's, mm -hmm. if you go back and you look at all of Kvaratskhelia's um, assists this season, the lion's share of them are to Victor Osimhen. The lion's share of them are to Victor Osimhen. He knows how to find that man and Victor Osimhen knows how to put the ball uh, away. And it, it is so amazing what Kavartskilia has done. And oh, by the way, Todd Bowley, okay? <laughs> Nine million euros spent on this man. Nine million euros spent. Not 120, not 60 for Kai Havertz. Not, I know he didn't spend 60 on it, but I'm saying a big price tag. I get it. It's few and far between that it ever happens. But when you scout and you find a player that has those intangibles that you want, you don't need to spend seventy million on a Mudrik coming from similar yeah. areas, right? No, Nine no, no. million Mudrik, is all it yes. took. Mudrik, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you well you do now because you wait. You didn't scout him previously. You scout him after he does some cool things in the Champions League, and his price tag goes up from five to seventy. Every one of these teams could have seen those intangibles in Mudrik previously to this. True. They needed validation before they pulled the trigger. Exactly. They didn't get the validation before Kavar at Skilia came in, and that's why Napoli is going to get just Fuck. massive amounts of money for this human being. Fuck. And 22 goals and assists in 22 games this season in <laughs> Serie A is absolutely mind-boggling and phenomenal, and he is still so fun to watch. As fun as he was the first day we saw him and he was new, he is more fun to watch right now um, like, for Napoli. So you're 100% right. Napoli will win this Serie A, um, and it's because Osimhen and Kavaraskilia have, have formed the most unlikely tandem, most productive tandem on the planet right now. And you're saying this about wingers and transfers. It's absolutely yeah. insane that any top European giant two years ago could have attained for a bargain deal Mudrik, Kvisha Kvaraskilia, yeah. and Mitoma. All super affordable, wouldn't cost more than five million to any. And now the scouting of these teams like Brighton, a uh, team like Napoli, it's paying off. Mm -hmm. It's paying off yep. deservedly. And I, once again, I, I'm going to agree with you. Napoli recruitment with Minje Kim, Lobotka, all these right moves needs to be mm -hmm. more talked about because yep. they deserve the Scudetto, in my opinion, too. And we're talking uh, about Scudetto, I just want to give a shout out to, to the Bundesliga because we talked about La Liga. We think Barca yeah. wins. We think Napoli wins Serie A. But the Bundesliga. Will Bayern yeah. once again win the Bundesliga? <laughs> I think so. I do uh, think so. I mean, it's not as if they're losing games. They're drawing games. Jamal and they're Musiel. keeping these teams in it. I think the bigger issue, yeah, I think the bigger issue for Bayern right now uh, no, I'm sorry. The bigger issue for Bayern not mm. to somehow win um, it is more so that these other teams around them, mm -hmm. they're, they're really not they're really not that good. Dortmund, you know, though. You, Dortmund. Union Berlin has outperformed. They have a structure, but they're not they're not going to win. They, they have a plus go, plus ten goal differential. They win mm -hmm. close games. They they out um, produce their analytics at all. All things Dortmund has some star power, but they're still trying to figure themselves out, and they are off to a nice bright start to start this yeah. year. Um, yes, they are. Gio Reyna, two mm -hmm. game winning goals, and and a third one to boot. Holler. Keep them healthy, and Holler it's amazing scored. when you Haller scored. Yes, it, it's amazing what happens with Gio Reyna um, <laughs> when when you proper properly tell somebody what their role is going to be That's moving true. forward. Um, which Burhalter did not do for the U.S. men's national team, but it's pretty clear that he understands his super sub role uh, for 
uh, for Dortmund. But yes, Sebastian Haller, I mean, Beating kicked cancer, cancer in the in in the nuts, for <laughs> lack of a better term here, right? And uh, and Haller scored his first goal back. Which, come on, if you can't get behind that, then you're not a football fan. Man, I'm for Dortmund to win the the Bundesliga. I'd love it. I think Bayern cool. are favorites, but please, Dortmund. Yeah. Haller's back. Karime Deemi's in the score sheet. Mukoko's involved. Yeah. Gio Reyna's going bold. And I'm gonna say this, man. For me, Jude Bellingham is the best player in the Bundesliga this season, and he's playing for Dortmund. They just have to sort out that defense, man. Schlotterbeck's yeah. improving, though, and Tom Rogge, yes. I like that player, too. So I, Tom I, I, okay. They're improving. I see signs of improvement in that Dortmund team. And, and, and I, I, I'm going to wholeheartedly agree with you. Jude <laughs> Bellingham is the best player in the Bundesliga right now. Um, kid, kid can do it all. He's, he's on the score sheet. He's getting stuck in. He's leading the team. He's... Mm-hmm. Every bit the character that they need, um, and if they find a way to somehow retain them for future years, there, no there's like no do. way. There's Impossible. just no way. <laughs> Impossible. Impossible. There's no way. Like, but I, another guy, mm-hmm. like Randall Kolo Muani. Uh, oh, if, 100 if, million. Uh, yeah, if Bellingham leaves, Dortmund should use some of that money to grab Kolo Muani. They I know they're not similar. They're not. They're not, they're not Impossible. I know. Uh, Kolo Muani, nine goals, 10 assists, and 17 Bundesliga <laughs> starts. Um, he's, he's every bit the star for Frank, for Frankfurt. And, uh, Mm -hmm. and he's got, I think he's got room to grow. He's 24, but I think he's like just tapping into what he can actually offer. Um, and he's, in my opinion, he should stay in the Bundesliga, but I doubt he will. I doubt. I think Prem, Prem can only pay what Frankfurt will ask. I've seen reports a hundred million Sky, Sky News is reporting. That's hundred million. A hundred million. <laughs> That's why I was like Dortmund, man. Dortmund. I Jesus. I don't know, but like Tom yeah, Bowley yeah. is me- he, Tom Bowley is screwing <laughs> up the transfer system, man. Oh my it's god, true. far it's- reaches. Randall Colomani is good, but 100 million, come on. It's because no you way. see, in Kunku 70, for me, a much better uh, deal than yeah. Todd Boyle did it. <laughs> True. <laughs> ah, My goodness. And, well, and, I, and I think that's going to be a heck of a deal, but yeah, that's 100 million at least. Yeah. That's what the but I'll tell you, saying. If Bellingham, if they want to keep a lot of the Bellingham, uh, mm-hmm. what it's going to cost to take Bellingham away, and they want to build some depth in that midfield and not rely on the Brant, Julian Brandt forever and ever and ever, mm-hmm. uh, a guy like you could do no wrong than Joseph Pantzel, who plays for Genk. Um, Genk, he's got 10, 10 goals, nine assists, and 18 starts this season. Yeah. And he's a Ghanaian midfielder that I think, I honestly believe that Dortmund could turn him into an absolute machine or manu okay Kone. absolute machine well, manu, manu kone, kone would cost a whole lot more but 30. yes uh <laughs> if you can get manu kone um th- th- he should get more than 30 manu kone what? is a very underrated player in the Fox. bundesliga Fox. he should go for more than 30 Fox. I'd he's like a great to player go to dortmund i'd like just wanted to shout that mm. out manu kone jude good, bellingham virts hopefully he goes bold too for leverkusen <laughs> people yeah. tell us down below who do you think is going to win these top leagues of the Bundesliga, La Liga, Serie A, and the most important league of them all, the Premier League, as it seems, because the money is just going straight to the front. Oh, my days. And do you think, yes, the Premier League team will win uh, the Champions League, too? That it was a great question from Bretton, man. And if you're listening yeah. until now, do not forget to like this video, people. Like episode 91. On our way, Road to 100, okay? A weekly Oof. podcast out every Monday, okay? At 6 o'clock, okay? So we're go- on Portuguese time. I don't know. We- with you in the U.S., <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's at 1. <laughs> it's Is it 1? I think it's 1. Are we... Yeah. Countless times you and I can't get it right because there's that <laughs> one time where it goes from five hours to four hours. Oh, my God. Um, but yes, time 100 change. is coming and we're going to have to do something fun for, for number 100 yes, for the century mark. Yes, we do. A hundred percent. And people, again, thank you for listening to episode 91 until now. And thank you. Thank you so much for going bold. <laughs>